Greetings fellow Salt and Sassers and welcome to another video on solo RPGs. Today I want to talk to you about Inscrutable Cities, which is a fabulous solo role-playing game about a traveler from a faraway land who has arrived within an impossible city, whose beauty and strangeness you seek to capture in your journal as you explore and travel through this magical metropolis. All you need to play is a journal, a pencil, and a coin to flip as the fork, uh, at the fork in the road. So again, journaling game. Uh, and that's a journaling game to its most extreme of all journaling game, which is this is a writer's game. This is an activity in writing. So I'm going to put it out there. There's no stats. Uh, there's definitely character building. There's world building. There's a tiny bit of randomness and I'll show it to you, but it's, it's almost minor in this game. But it's super interesting. And let me just introduce like this. So there's a lot of writing here, which is not really game driven. So here begins the prompt where you set up your character. So are you a goat herd, a hunter, a laborer, a refugee, a thief? Are you seeking penance, justice, vengeance, infamy, a claim? In your luggage, what kind of trinket do you carry? A glass lamp, a pearl crested skull, ostrich plume, golden scale? Uh, in your travel, I've left you hopeful, invigorated, furious, vain, enamored, wary. But who are you really? Do you have a name, alias, or title? Where are you presently? This is relevant because actually uh, you build your character as they are at the end of the adventure rather than the beginning. So as you will begin the actual adventure, it would lead into the person that you are creating now. So that's a bit of an interesting twist, I think. Um, how are you telling your story? Who are you sending it? And again, they call the optional plot puzzle, but basically as you travel through the cities, uh, try to link up with some of the things you've created here, which I think is a good idea because it could give direction to the story. So we have some prompts here. Then you arrive in a city, uh, you know, what's the name of your city and how did you get there? And what is the city known for? A bit of social construct. So first impressions, how the citizens like, how did you arrive and how were you received? Uh, so that's interesting. And again, the prompts are good. For example, this is something like, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, what sorts of access physically and socially were you denied and by whom? So that might seem like a weird sentence, but when you're creating, it's like, oh yeah, that's right. Like, am I like basically like welcome, not welcome? You know, is there some kind of social standing in the city? Where do I fit in its structure? Do they welcome travelers? Do they not welcome travelers? So the prompts are well done to really promote world building, which I'm saying like this is a writer thing because the essence of this game is to creating a story. Uh, once you're done with that, then is basically the meat of the game, if I can say, which, you know, you talk about what you visit in the city and then you literally look at your watch or phone, look at the time, pick the very last digit of the time that it is, flip to the relevant entry from zero to nine. So again, not that many prompts when you think about it. And then you answer it. So for example, you learn about something that you only half understand and which therefore obsesses you. First of all, based on the law you've created, what is it that you learn about? Then you flip your coin, determine on the hat to swallow, heads or tail, functionally. So you powerfully desire it. How do you try to avoid it? Or other option, you deeply loathe it. How do you try to seek it out? So you see how the prompt uh, already sort of promote sort of a more complex feeling. It's not straightforward. And this is what this game encourages, both in its prompt and in the way that the instructions are written. So I want to give you a bit of an example here. If we look at, uh, for example, this. So there's a whole section of this book that they call the world unbuilding, which is a way sort of to focus you for playing this game. Because again, this game is about writing. So what this game does is to get you started on writing. And uh, they say, okay, first of all, try to banish out what we'll call the daily woes and come up with a ritual to focus and let your imagination flow. And I'm going to read you these two paragraphs because I think they are interesting and exemplify the prose of this book. Perhaps, for example, you put on your favorite sweater, make a cup of tea and put on the traveling playlist you've made for the occasion. 
You stretch, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and pour the tea. You imagine that this kind of solace, if not peace and happiness, then at least safety and comfort, may be standardly available to all. You think about what you have given but never received. You think about what you have taken but never shared. Or perhaps you are the fancy sort and you dress up in detailed costume and decorate your desk as one belonging to an eccentric scholar traveler. You cover all your mirrors and draw your shades. Your writing supplies are carefully knolled on the surface of your desk. You light a candle and say a prayer, then clap once, loudly, as if scaring off a wild and delicate creature and, concurrently, calling another kind to your side, one perhaps more loyal to you, but more dangerous to you as well. Thus, us campers are old world, and in ambles this new world that you have invite invited. Here, in this place of your making, you decide that all of the fungus are sentient, and nobody has ever, thank goodness, heard of golf. So <laughs> this is an example of the way this book is written, but I found that in the way that it sets off the game, the pros of the instruction really do optimally put me in the frame of mind to write a story that the prompts are made to do. So this book, um, this game, this exercise, almost feels a little bit like a piece of art because of the very way it integrates the tone of the book with the tone of the stories it invites you to create. It is very, very well done. I was actually surprised by the stories that I came up with while playing this game. Not that they're, you know, <laughs> publishing worthy, but that they brought things out of me I didn't even know were there. And that's always fun when I surprise myself with my own daydreaming. So if you are a writer or you want to be a writer, if you like daydreaming, this is a really good game to explore. I'll also say that I got a paper copy of this game. I don't regret it. Like I said, it does feel a little bit like a piece of art. Uh, but, you know, if you're on a budget or you're budget conscious, there's not a lot of flipping back and forth in this game. So this is one that is, in my opinion, very uh, well adapted to a PDF play. So that's something uh, that I want to put out there for your consideration. And I don't know what else I can say about Inscrutable Cities other than if you like writing, if you like sort of fabulous, crazy, make up your own city, daydreaming, makes no sense, but somehow speaks to your soul in the weirdest way possible. This is a, a game by Julian K. Jarbo that you may want to check out. And on that note, I will wish you a very good day.